Hey guys, and welcome to this update video on fan control. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about um, where's fan control right now as a software, and maybe where it's going, and what has been happening in the past few months. Uh, I know my last video, it's been quite a while, um, but uh, there's a reason why, and I'm going to try to explain today um, why I haven't posted in a while. So, um, fan control uh, has been, um, it's been over a year since it's been uh, in the wild. So, uh, I first um, published it as a time limited, um, a time limited software, basically, because I was not really happy with uh, how stable it was and I just wanted people to give it a try. And, and then I published it as a fully fledged um, donationware um, software. So there's I have collected a lot of feedback. Um, there's been over tens of thousands of downloads, um, and I receive email every day from people um, telling me um, what could be improved or just how they like the software. So there's been a lot of feedback. And um, over the past few months, you might have uh, noticed that there's been less frequent updates. So why is that? Um, well, over, with over a year in the wild, I mean, Fan Control uh, developed quite a made like a, a mature feature set, basically. Um, so and a lot of the more obvious um bugs and stuff have been fixed basically and a lot of the feature requests like the major ones have been addressed already so there's like a limit to what a fan controlling software um should do um i had a lot of um requests for more data logging or those kind of features, but I wanted fan control to to only be a fan controlling software. It's not a fan control is not a monitoring software. There are other there are other better software to do so, and I wanted I wanted to be fan control to 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 stay a focused software to only do one thing and one thing right, controlling fans. So this is why I I, I refuse to uh, add a lot of feature and in, in features in that sense. And um, yeah, so there's been lately a lot a lot less new features and a lot more bug fixes, uh, library updates, optimizations, and a bit of fat trimming uh, because fun control has become a quite more mature software uh, as of lately. However, um, there's one thing that um, has been the, a quite, kind of a main issue uh, for the software. And this is one of the reasons why I kept it as a um, donationware and a freeware. And what's that main issue you ask? It's hardware support. Um, that's the elephant in the room. That's the main uh, problem for those kind of software. Um, hardware support is incredibly difficult. There's a lot of motherboards, a lot of new chipsets, a lot of Super I.O. chips to support. Um, there are new video cards coming out, uh, new APIs all the time. And I don't have all of the motherboards to test out. And right now, I rely on uh, open source libraries for hardware support. And so I cannot, like, I do not develop the hardware support myself. I contribute to those libraries from time to time for stuff that I can, um, like, if it's my personal hardware or somebody's hardware I can test on, uh, I will contribute. But um, I don't have access to every single motherboard on the market. And one other thing is that um, 
the dead data sheets for um, or and the APIs to control uh, the chips on the motherboards to control fans and stuff. Um, most of the time, they're not really public. They're like only shared across manufacturers and specific software developers and stuff. So uh, I don't have access to those. So I, I, I cannot really ask money for software uh, that I cannot uh, rely like from a reliability perspective uh, maintain for hardware support. And so this is why I've kept it as a donation wear and I intend to keep it that way for now. Uh, unless I have a breakthrough or something, but I don't think that's going to happen. So yeah, hardware support has been the main issue. And as of uh, late, I try to address some of it. So I'm going to share with you what's been new for um, the last few updates. And as of update 49, which is the current version as of the filming of this video. So what's new? Um, there's a new NVIDIA backend uh, for um, NVIDIA GPUs to control the fans, read the temperatures and stuff. So I changed the backend structure of fan control in order to accommodate multiple, um, basically multiple hardware backends. So right now I'm using Open Hardware Monitor for all of the motherboard fan control. And for NVIDIA I'm, GPUs, I'm using NVAPI wrapper, which is a more up-to-date uh, API to uh, control uh, NVIDIA's graphics card, and mainly RTX uh, series graphics cards with the new uh, NVIDIA uh, API for controlling fans. Uh, but it also supports, of course, uh, older uh, GPUs. So that has been uh, working quite uh, quite well. So and the new API support um, controlling indiv individual fans on your GPU. So some GPUs have like three fans and two of them are coupled together, which you can control. And the third one is a, like another control. So this API allows to control those individual fans. So so that has been uh, one of the new uh, update. Uh, also, uh, there's been um, quite a few uh, requests for um, a new kind of fan curve, which I, I called target fan curve. I'm going to show you how it works in the, the demo. Um, there's also, also been a quite a few requests for external temperature sensors. So, um, um, like uh, now, fan controls support um, basically reading a temperature sensor from a file, or you're basically mocking a temperature sensor. So you can have an external software uh, writing a temperature to a file, and fan control re will read it as a temperature sensor. So that allows um, a ton of new kind of ways to control your fans. So, and people have been quite creative with that. And uh, I mean, the people that are interested uh, in those kind of uh, feature will, uh, I, I think, quite like uh, this uh, possibility. Um, also, I've done a, quite a few UI tweaks uh, to in order for you to be able to clean up your layout for your cards. Uh, I will be showing that in the demo. And also, uh, yeah, there's been a new uh, function for the mix curve, which is average. I will also show that in the demo. And, and finally, I've um, integrated uh, the scheduled task to start fan control with uh, the Windows startup uh, directly into the software. So now there's no running scripts uh, to start fan control with Windows. It's all integrated with the, the software. So that's what's new. So now let me show you uh, those feature live. Um, 
So yeah, so the first thing I'm going to show you is the target fan curve. So with the plus button, you got a target logo. So when you click on that, it creates a new type of fan curve, which is the target fan curve. I have two of them here. And the target fan curve looks a lot like uh, the linear fan curve as far as the parameters, but uh, it's quite different in the way it works. So instead of having a minimum and a maximum, you have a idle and a load temperature and fan speed. How it works is um, it won't change a fan speed until uh, it reach those threshold. So let me show you how, how it works. So right now the idle fan speed is 50% and the load fan speed is 80. And I'm using an external sensor uh, to trigger this fan curve. So an extender sensor is basically a dot sensor file, which is in the same folder as fan control. So right now in the file, you can see it's 30 and the software reads 30 degrees Celsius. So I can increase that, uh, that number, let's say to 45 and the software will, will read 45. But as you can see, the temp, the, percentage uh, fan speed didn't change. So in order for it to go to the 80%, I need to exceed or or equal the low temperature. So if I write down, let's say 72 degrees and do enter, as you can see, the fan speed changed to 80%, which is the low fan speed. I can change it to, let's say, I don't know, 95 and now it's 95. And for it to go back to 50%, uh, it's the other way around. I need to go lower or equal to 35 degrees. So if I go 40, it will keep the fan speed at 95 until all the residual heat basically uh, exhausts of your system until it goes back to 35 or lower. So if I go back to 35, the fan speed will go to 50%. So this is how the target fan curve behaves. And this is how you can uh, do external IO with fan control as far as temperature. So you just create a dot sensor file and you can have an external software or a script or whatever. You can call even a web API or something and get a value and it will uh, it will trigger fan curves in fan control as a temperature source. So this is uh, those two features basically working together. So now um, another new feature is with the mix fan curve. So on the right here, we got a mix card. And uh, previously, we had the max function and the sum function. Um, uh, but uh, right now I, I use the average function. So it's pretty, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, so I use those two um, target fan curve. I apply them to the mix. And now if I, uh, I don't know, let's do a hundred degrees on the first, uh, on the first fan curve. And it, the mix curve will basically do an average of the two fan curves. So you can use that function as uh, a way to see uh, your heat output of your system as a, as a sum of multiple um, of multiple components. So instead of being maxed to either like your CPU or your GPU, you view both as a, uh, a heat output of like the both components together. And you want only your fans to go full blast if both the components are hot. Um, so that's a, an, kind of another way to, uh, control your, your system. So now that's available. Um, yeah, so that's basically the new features as far as curves. Um, another uh, thing I mentioned is uh, start with Windows. Previously, I included a script in the zip uh, to register a scheduled task for a starting fan control with Windows. Now, in order to do so, you basically just have to click a uh, checkbox 
uh, in the menu and it will register or unregister the task uh, itself. So now it's way more simple. Um, so that's set for Windows, uh, start with Windows integration. And uh, last thing, you can now uh, more easily hide uh, cards. So let's say I, I'm not using the CPU pump uh, header on my, on my motherboard. So I can now click the three dot menu and I have the hide option. Um, so as you can see, the card went uh, dimmer basically. And this is because right now I'm showing hidden cards. So if I untick that, now the card is hidden. And if I want to, I can hide multiple cards like this and they just go away. But if I want to bring them back, I can show the hidden cards. So now I can see which one were removed and I can simply untick the option. Oops, and bring them back if I want to. Um, so there's that. I can do the same thing for the speed cards. Uh, it's the same behavior. Um, but since speed cards are, are only really useful um, for matching with controls, so as you can see right now, most of my controls have the RPM directly on them because I've matched my controls with my speed cards. I can also simply, like previously, hide all the fan speed cards. Uh, once you've uh, matched all of your uh, sensors. So yeah, that's pretty much it as far as a uh, new feature. I hope uh, that was a comprehensive demo. And uh, yeah, so there's l not a lot of new features coming uh, for fun control. I'm still reading emails. I'm still taking uh, feedback. And uh, I hope uh, you guys uh, are uh, enjoying the software and are using it in your uh, more modern systems since like speed fans and stuff is uh, deprecated for like four plus years and most motherboard software sucks basically. So uh, yeah, so I hope you enjoy the software and I will uh, read the comments for feedback and uh, feature requests and stuff. And also feel free to go on the GitHub page for fan control. Uh, the, you can open issues there and you can see uh, what's new and uh, what's coming up there. You can also send me an email or you can donate to my PayPal if you enjoy the software and you feel like it's worth anything. And uh, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya.